decal machine has been updated to support Blender 4.3, and with that I'm also raising the minimum Blender version to 4.2 LTS now. That means I could now also update the supplied assets, so they work in 4.2 LTS out of the box after installation. However, since 4.3 introduced a new parameter on the principled BSDF shader, diffuse roughness, you will have to update your assets, even the supplied ones, to be able to use them in 4.3. As always keep in mind that this process can't be reversed. So if you intend to keep using both, Blender 4.2 and 4.3, make sure you set up separate asset directories. Watch the terminal if you like, for progress. Should only take a few seconds, but depends on how many assets you have in your folder of course. Don't forget that once your decal assets are updated on disk, you should also update any blend files still using the old decals, at least if you intend to continue working in these files. The decal select tool has received an update, by default it is invoked via double left mouse, and so you can double click on a decal parent to select all its decals, or you can double click on a decal to select all decals of this kind, either scene wide, or limited to the current decal parent. If you click on a decal parent, you now have the option to filter decals by type in the redo panel, so simple, subset, panel, or info. For instance, now I choose to only select the panel decals on this part, maybe because I want to hide them, or selectively adjust their ambient occlusion. Furthermore, the tool is also available in the Pi menu now, and you can access it very quickly by pressing D and Q in sequence. This allows you to disable the double left mouse key map if you wanted to use it for something else maybe. The benefit of doing it from a button in the Pi is that it works very well with multi-object selections too. Whereas, if you wanted to do this with the double left mouse key map, you have to remember to click on the background when you have multi-object selections. As otherwise, the double click would mess with your object selection. The Adjust Decal tool is more contextually aware now. That means it will only show relevant options, depending on the decals in your selection. For instance, for this subset decal, you can see the adjustment modes at the top only include Height, AO and Parallax Depth now. Whereas previously it would have shown modes unique to panel decals too. Such as Stretch and Width mode. As before, you can also still mix selections of course, and will then have everything exposed that the selection allows for. Also, at the bottom of the HUD, the states for glossy rays, parallax, smoothness and normal transfer are now shown. And for info decals the state of inversion, instead of parallax. For mixed selections with mixed properties, the HUD will indicate that too now, and toggling a property that is in a mixed state, will synchronize it across the selected decals or their materials. For info decals you can now easily adjust the opacity by using the A key to go into alpha adjustment mode. Note that this is capped to 0.01 and won't allow you to make a decal completely transparent, which I think would get confusing. But keep in mind that the A key used to adjust the alpha here still also adjusts ambient occlusion for simple, subset and panel decals. And so, if you happen to have a mixed selection of info decals and normal mapped ones, then using A will adjust both alpha and ambient occlusion at the same time. To avoid this, use the Select tool to filter decals by type, as shown earlier. Finally, the Adjust tool now also allows you to toggle the shading of a decal selection using the F key. Note that when you disable smooth shading, the normal transfer will be disabled automatically for you, and enabling it is only an option when the decal is smooth shaded. Most likely, you won't be using this much though, because all other tools have also been updated to properly work on flat shaded geometry now, and automatically determine how a decal should be shaded based on its parent. Previously working with decals on flat shaded models, such as blockouts could occasionally produce odd shading especially when the normal transfer tried to smooth across hard edges. That should no longer be an issue now.
Decals can now be used on some non-mesh objects too, including curve, surface, and meta objects. Curve objects like this one are probably the most interesting out of these three new supported types. You can insert decals on these and project on them too. You can slice them and even use G-Panel or E-Panel on them. Of course, if you modify the curve objects, the decals won't follow, so be aware of that. Still pretty cool. And for what it's worth, these curves are made using Curve Machine as you might have guessed. So if you wanted to improve your curve modeling workflow, I would highly recommend it. Now shrink wrapping has always been an alternative way to project a regular decal in decal machine. If you project a decal normally, it actually takes on the exact topology of the underlying object. This also locks it into place. If however, you use the alternative projection mode, utilizing a subdivision and shrink wrap mod, then you can still move the decal around. But this then also requires considerable more distance between the decal and the surface it sits on top of. What's new in Decal Machine 2.13 is that you can now also shrink wrap panel decals, and after, they have been created and locked into place using the Slice, G Panel, or E Panel tools. Why? Because here, it actually helps lowering the distance to the surface now. If I reset the decal height, and let's do that for all the panel decals here. You can see how they sink into the surface, because unlike projected ones or topo sliced panels, they don't conform to the topology of the parent object. However, if you shrink wrap these panel decals now, then without any or with only very minimal additional displacement, the panel decals will rise and conform to the surface. And of course, the closer a decal is to the surface, the better. With Eevee doing ray tracing too now, this is more important than ever if you want to avoid decal shadowing or reflections. Adding a subdivision and shrink wrap mod does come at the cost of additional geometry, but that's really not as much a limiting factor anymore as it used to be in the past. And so I'd say shrink wrapping panel decals is a good idea for most panel decals on curved surfaces. If you use the alternative topo slice mode, you can skip it completely. But that would be more difficult to get to work nicely on curved surfaces anyway, compared to the standard float slice approach. Now, this shrink wrapping by the project tool is modifier based, as I have shown and explained. But there has always been a mesh based shrink wrapping approach for panel decals too, that is part of the panel unwrap tool. So, let's unshrink wrap this panel, and then edit the mesh a little. You would then unwrap it after, to recreate proper UVs. And let's say you've been a bit lazy modeling this. Then you could always use the unwrap tool with the alt key, to shrink wrap the panel mesh back to the surface. Previously this only worked on mesh objects. But as of this version it also works on curve, surface and meta objects. Unfortunately, Blender's shrink wrap mod doesn't work on curve objects. So the mesh-based approach is the only way for now, until I replace it with a geo-node approach maybe. The material override tool now supports instance collections or assembly assets, as I like to call them, and as they can be created using machine tools. These are empties that reference a collection. And empties don't carry materials themselves, of course. So the tool now fetches materials from objects inside the referenced collection, and overrides them accordingly. In addition, there is a new preset now called Coat. Also the Coat Weight parameter is now exposed for the other three presets as well. Adding a coat to a material then allows you to undercoat decals of course, a technique introduced and shown in a previous release. Last but not least, 
If you intend to take your decals into a game engine, you can now choose to create a TGA Atlas instead of using PNG. The details of atlasing have not been changed and so if you are new to the process, please check the documentation. But in short, to actually use the decal atlas instead of individual decal textures, you first have to store it into your asset library, at which point it can be used by the decals, which means decal UVs get adjusted to match the atlas layout, and decals get assigned a shared atlas material too.